Hello my friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the out of some of DNA results, predicted phenotype traits and even GED match results of a Lochbor, Lushbor, I don't know how to pronounce it, it's a western hunter gatherer from Luxembourg. Uh, this individual lived, let's take a look at the timeline, when did this individual live? This individual lived 62 to 59 centuries before the common era, a long time ago, uh, this looks like um, the Neolithic, maybe even, yeah, this is the Neolithic, or maybe the Mesolithic, I'm not sure. It might be the Mesolithic, actually. So this is either a Neolithic or Mesolithic individual. Uh, and this individual is a male, he's got Y-DNA I2A1, and his mitochondrial line lineage, which is the maternal lineage you get from your mom, she gets from her mom, her mom gets from her mom, and so forth and so on. His maternal lineage is U5, very stereotypically European uh, MITI DNA. So, where is he from? This is where this individual was from. I said he was from Luxembourg. Did I lie to you? I did not lie to you. Yes, he is indeed from Luxembourg, um, kind of close to the border of Germany, right? And yeah, that's where he's from. Now, let's go ahead and get into his results with my trade predictor. First, we're going to start with. Uh, OCA2 and HERC2 eye color calculator. Uh, this basically attempts to calculate the eye color using only genotypes in the OCA2 and HERC2 region. And using this calculator, he is scoring 44% blue eyes, 30% blue eyes with a neighbor center, and the rest is kind of really insignificant. The likelihood of brown eyes is uh, less than 0.2% combined, so definitely doesn't have any kind of brown eyes. Uh, but that is if you only take into account the OCA2 and HERC2 gene. So if you take into account OCA2 and HERC2 gene, he's definitely very light. I mean, he's got BEH3, he's got BEH2, he's got BEH1. The only blue eye haplotype he lacks is BEH4, and that's a very insignificant, it's a pretty insignificant variation, to be honest. If you have BEH1, BEH2, BEH3, typically you're going to have blue eyes and blonde hair. Typically that's how it's going to go. But in his case... That's actually not the case, and we're going to see his results with Nashakot. The difference between Nashakot and OCA2 and HERC2 eye color estimator is that Nashakot takes into account all of the other genes as well, not just OCA2 and HERC2. So you see with Nashakot, uh, the score is actually different. With Nashakot, he seems to be scoring blue eyes with a neighbor center as number one, green eyes as number two, hazel eyes as number three, uh, and blue eyes actually come at number four. He's got blue eyes with a neighbor center instead of blue eyes if you take every other gene into account. Uh, he, it looks like he also has dark blonde hair, and it looks like he's got intermediate or olive skin. Actually, uh, the likelihood of light or fair skin for him is, it looks like 0.001%. So it's pretty unlikely for him to have pale skin. And most likely he's got intermediate or olive skin, and not dark or brown skin as he's often portrayed in the media. You know, in the media they often paint this picture that he's got this really dark charcoal black looking skin cut no not really not really olive skin not that dark and this is kind of the predicted eye color what it might look like and in terms of the hair texture my nashakot is predicting him to have wavy hair uh definitely not kinky hair the likelihood of kinky hair is pretty much 0 0.003 <laughs> triple zeros definitely not kinky hair for him uh it looks like his hair texture is wavy or curly or straight but most likely wavy. All right, let's go ahead and look at his polygenic risk scores now. So for the polygenic risk scores, we see something really incredible. What is so incredible about the score? It's incredible that he has very, very little odds of schizophrenia. His odds are 112 times the average. So he's definitely doesn't have schizophrenia, right? That's, that's not something he's got. Uh, he's got above average odds of type 2 diabetes, and he's got pretty much average, maybe slightly below average odds of Alzheimer's. For cancer section, he's got four risk variants for breast cancer out of 24, which is kind of typical, kind of, you know, average. And he's got 14 risk variants for testicular cancer out of 24, which is also kind of typical, kind of average, maybe slightly above average, but not to the point where it would be like concerning or anything. Uh, He's got AG in Comte's Valmet variation, so he's between Warrior and Warrior in Comte. However, he is a Warrior in MAOA. Uh, being a Warrior is an extremely European uh, trait. Europeans are the ones who these Warrior alleles peak in. And he's definitely a Warrior overall, if you take into account both Comte and MAOA. 
uh, 0 0.5 plus 1, you take the average of that, it's going to be closer to 1 than to 0, you know what I'm saying? Uh, he's got 2 no goal learner variants and the early 2 spirofluence in pro variation, which means less dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain. Once again, very typical genotype for a European. This genotype also, well, actually, I don't know if it's typical for European, I don't know if that's the right way to phrase it. The right, phrase to f the right uh, way to phrase it, it's stereotypically European. Like, if you have this genotype, you probably have some kind of European ancestry, or if you don't, it's just really uncommon. Uh, what's interesting is this leads to a reduction in the risk of schizophrenia. So, so if you saw his score in the beginning for schizophrenia was really, really low, this contributed. This is a big part of the reason his score for schizophrenia is so low. Uh, he's got this genotype in this variation, meaning less dopamine D2 receptors as once again, once again, decreased risk of schizophrenia. And this also comes together with this genotype. These two kind of come together most of the time. They're pretty closely linked. Uh, he does not have the A1 allele in TAC1. So that means he's got typical genotype for humans, slightly higher number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain, slightly lower risk of ADHD and alcoholism, stuff like that. Um, he's got GG genotype in this version of DRD2, which is the typical genotype for most humans and leads to slightly lower risk of schizophrenia and nicotine dependence. Okay, and is there anything else that's interesting here? He's got TC genotype in this variation of DRD4, which is a genotype associated with slightly elevated likelihood of multiple mental health conditions, including novelty seeking, addiction, and intellectual disability. Very interesting. Um, he does not have long form 5 HTTLPR, so it looks like he's got short form 5 HTTLPR, slightly higher odds of depression, things like that. And it looks like he. No, wait a second, no! He does have long form 5 HTTLPR because of this of this genotype. You see, in terms of when it comes to uh, 5 HTTLPR, you don't need to have both to have long form 5 HTTLPR. As long as you have one, as long as you have one variant for long for uh, long form 5 HTTLPR out of four variants, you're gonna have the phenotype. It's a very like um, it's a very like dominant phenotype, right? So he's got long form 5 HTTLPR. And he's got a lower risk of depression. Now, what's interesting about this is, is that it's um, a genotype that's extremely uniquely European. Uh, you will not find people with long form 5 HTTLPR outside of Europe. If you do, it's going to be really rare, really uncommon. But among Europeans, like, for example, myself, I have long form 5 HTTLPR. My mom, she does it, she, she's got it too. It's just a very European thing. All right, no risk variance for psychosis in this variation of MIR378F. Typical genotype. And it looks like this individual, this Lochbor man, Lochbor, Lachbor, I don't know how to pronounce it. He does not carry risk. Um, I'm saying risk. He does not carry. <coughs> <coughs> he does not carry European lactose persistence mutations. <coughs> so he doesn't have the European lactose persistence mutations. Uh, I think they came about a little bit later. Um, that's why you don't see that many samples from this far back in time who would have the European lactose persistence mutations. For OXTR, it looks like he's got two variants for higher levels of empathy in this variation. This is the variation I typically go by when I talk about OXTR, but let's talk about, since since this is a high quality file, let's talk about the other ones too. Uh, in this variation, he's got genotype associated with higher OXTR expression once again, higher levels of empathy, really good. In this genotype, he's got a, in this variation, he's got a genotype that's correlated to lower levels of empathy. However, in this variation, he's got a genotype correlated to higher levels of empathy. So it's basically three versus one. Overall, I would say he's probably more of an empath rather than a sociopath. For diabetes, it looks like he does not have type 1 diabetes. Good for him. Uh, however, he does have some genotypes that increase the odds of type 2 diabetes, such as this one or this one. When it comes to hemochromatosis, this is very interesting, by the way. Uh, he actually has a risk variant for hemochromatosis. Look at that. So it's not his 63 ASP. It's not cis 282 tier. It's actually S65C. And in this variation, he has heterozygous genotype, which means he carries one risk variant for hemochromatosis. Uh, hemochromatosis, in case you don't know, is an uh, illness of iron. You get too much iron building up in your system, and it it's really scary, actually. It's, it doesn't sound that bad, iron building up. You know, iron, you're, you're told to eat it, it's healthy. But when it builds up, it really messes with your kidney and liver, and you end up, like, dying if you don't treat it. Uh, it's called the Celtic curse, uh, commonly. So this individual, this Lockborn individual, actually carries one risk variant for that. Moving on to Alzheimer's, Lockborman does not have any risk variants in APOE, which is uh, by far the most important gene when it comes to Alzheimer's prediction, Alzheimer's scores. So it's good. 
Uh, I think his polygenic score for Alzheimer's was pretty low. Let's check that again. Yeah, it's below average. So he doesn't really have that much of a risk for Alzheimer's. Uh, he does have a risk for type 2 diabetes. Let's scroll back here to Alzheimer's. Where were we? Yeah, so his score for Alzheimer's, he doesn't really have any variants. Oh, he has this one. So he's got this genotype which slightly increases the odds of Alzheimer's and every other uh, genotype pretty much decreases it. Pretty good. He's got the G allele in this variation of, um, I'm not going to pronounce this SNP, but he's got the G allele here and the G allele here is really uncommon and I want to talk about it. Usually I just skip past the myopia section, but in this case I'm going to talk about it. Uh, this allele leads to lower risk of myopia and slightly better eyesight. The thing is, it's very extremely European. Like outside of Europe, you're not really going to find the G allele. Uh, in the Middle East, you'll find it. In uh, maybe North Africa, you will find it, but not in like East Asia or Australia natives or like uh, Sub-Saharan Africans. The G allele is extremely European here and it really protects from myopia. So it's really cool. Uh, this individual probably has pretty good eyesight. By, by the way, this is by far the most important variation when it comes to myopia. Like nothing else here is as important as this one. He does not have micro P, uh, does not have this this variation for micro P either, good for him. Uh, it looks like he's got higher IQ uh, based on his genotype here. However, 8 points lower IQ than individuals with GG genotype in this variation, which is kind of interesting. But you know, it, it's, it was a pretty small study. Uh, I remember the study that this is from. It's not a very big study to be honest, so I don't know the validity of this uh, so much. Uh, it looks like he's got better performing muscles, likely sprinter rather than endurance athlete, and two fat gene variants in FTOs, RS-99, So it looks like he's got two variants for obesity in the fat gene. And I know it sounds really mean calling a gene that has to do with, like, obesity and sleep apnea, calling it the fat gene and naming it, like, FTO, which basically has fat in its name. It sounds kind of super mean, but, you know, science community is really mean sometimes like that. Um... Does not have photic sneeze ref reflex, but carries one allele for photic sneeze reflex. Photic sneeze reflex, once again, is most typical for Europeans. Uh, no variants for increased pain sensitivity, okay. No mental retardation variants, likely healthy, based on his genotype here. Uh, he does not have East Asian EZAR, so pretty much typical European facial traits. Also, also does not have um, East Asian uh, Asian flushing mutation, which is very interesting. Uh, you see some East Asians, not all of them, but some of them, maybe like 40% of them ha are East Asian flushers. And what that means is when they drink alcohol, they flush up. They get drunk from a very small amount of alcohol. They don't, for them, it's like one quarter of what it is for me. If I were to get drunk, I would need to drink a liter. For them to get drunk, they would need to drink one quarter of a liter. You know how it is. And they get addicted to alcohol super, super quickly as well. So that's kind of what it is. Uh, he's not an Asian flusher, so he can tolerate alcohol pretty well. He's got a larger brain volume based on his genotype here, and he's actually uh, genotype here is actually not determined, which is very surprising because this is a very high quality file. Pretty much everything, as you can see, is found in this file. Everything that my thing looks for. I really like working with files that are this high quality. Um, it looks like he's less likely to gain weight if taking Zyprexa, and it looks like he's got slightly increased odds of cannabis and psychosis based on his genotype in Act One. Well, you know, uh, Western hunter gatherers. I don't think they were smoking cannabis. When it comes to albinism, it looks like he does not carry any variants for albinism. Yep. And he does not carry variants for cleft lip and palate. And he also doesn't carry any Melanesian blonde hair variants. So he's pretty much a typical looking guy. When it comes to familiar Mediterranean fever, uh, no risk variants for that. Yep, no risk variance. And by the way, look at that. Everything is in the file. Isn't that amazing? Like, I'm I'm so used to working with files that are like 10 megabytes in size. Uh, you know, files that are incomplete in coverage. And, I, and I'm seeing like most of it is not determined. But this is a file where pretty much everything is, is in there. And it's just so cool. I love it. For MTHFR, it looks like he's got 65 efficiency in processing folic acid. Uh, pretty typical genotype. I think I have the same genotype here as well. Uh, slightly higher than average odds for a variety of illnesses from autism to coronary heart disease. Um, he's got a TT genotype in this version of MCHFR, which is the most common genotype and leads to lower odds of various health issues. Once again, pretty good. And he's got an AA genotype here, which it leads to average or slightly higher than average blood pressure. All right. 
Now, when it comes to cancers, uh, it looks like he's got some genotypes for reduced risk of testicular cancer. Uh, three times reduced risk of testicular. Yeah, it's pretty good. Probably doesn't have testicular cancer. Uh, I wrote here on the, on the screen is the most important variations for breast cancer and testicular cancer. Uh, for some reason, I uh, I put this down here. It's it doesn't play a role in uh, polygenic risk score. So, for example, if you open the polygenic risk scores, you see there is a risk variance for cancers, right? 14 out of 24 for testicular, 4 out of 24 for breast cancer. Um, you see, the thing is, uh, the thing the thing is. This is not one of them. This doesn't play a part. I just put it here because I didn't know where else I could put this. Um, I couldn't really put it into into a miscellaneous section because I can't really put stuff about living longer and chemotherapy in the same category as micro P, you know? It just wouldn't seem right. So that's why I put it in the cancer section. Uh, but he's got an uncommon genotype. He lives three years longer and chemotherapy is more effective for him. So good. Looks like he does not have any NQ013 alleles. I can't pronounce that. It's really difficult, um, which is really good. Average odds of leukemia. And he's got pretty much normal or lower odds of leukemia when it comes to all the other genotypes as well. When it comes to rare diseases panel, which is, by the way, in most samples, none of this is de determined. None of this is found in most samples, but this is a very high quality sample. So here everything is actually found, which is really like exciting for me. Um, he does not have von Gerke's disease. I don't really know what that is. I just kind of looked up like rare illnesses um, and there is in peace. Uh, he's not a carrier for variants for Bloom syndrome. Once again, I don't really remember what that is. And he, he's he got this genotype actually, which slightly increased risk for various autoimmune diseases, including Addison's disease, which is very interesting. But it's not a precise, it's not a really rare genotype. It's just a genotype that you might not want to have because it increases the risk for a bunch of stuff from Addison's disease to I remember it's it's uh, diabetes as well. Just you don't you don't really want to have this genotype. All right, that's pretty much all there is to it. So that was um, that was Lockbor. Now let's go ahead and look at his scores with um, Eurogene's K13. So this is what he scores with Eurogenes K13. He's scoring mostly Baltic and North Atlantic. Actually, almost entirely Baltic and North Atlantic. Um, a little bit Oceanian and Siberian, but it looks like it looks like uh, it's typical for hunter gatherers from Europe to have a little bit of an affinity to, um, you know, like East Asians and stuff like that. So that's why he's scoring Oceanian and Siberian and East Asian, uh, but mostly Baltic and North Atlantic. I'm a little bit surprised that he's scoring West Mediterranean. Uh, but maybe maybe it's because Western hunter-gatherers have some kind of affinity to, like, farmers and stuff like that, whereas Eastern hunter-gatherers have affinities to uh, Caucasians and Baloch and Iranian Neolithic, stuff like that. Because you see with um, GED match calculators, you often see Western hunter-gatherers scoring a little bit of West Mediterranean components, whereas you see Eastern hunter-gatherers scoring a little bit of, um, you know, like, South Asian or West Asian components. So... In this case, maybe it's not so surprising, but this is an extremely European result. Um, it's extremely European because because Baltic and North Atlantic are the components that set Northern Europeans apart from every other ethnicity in terms of uh, genetic drift, right? It's the Baltic and North Atlantic. They capture Northern European genetic drift. And this individual is entirely Northern European genetic drift. So it's he's as Northern European as you can even be. Like, it doesn't get more Northern European than him. Well, thanks for watching my video until the end. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed uh, my content. Uh, you can download this file in 23andMe format from link which is in the description of the video. Um, and now thanks for watching. Goodbye. Leave a like and subscribe.